Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a kumquat branch. If you guys have never seen the citrus fruit before, kumquats are tiny oval oranges. They are fairly tart and we use them for desserts and drinks. I'm going to start by sketching out the outline. I drew out the main branch which is slightly curved sideways from the center upwards and from there I'm going to draw on the leaves. I'm going to play around with the shapes of the leaves by angling and adding twists and folds to them. This way they have more movement and it will also look more natural. I'm also going to draw them fairly large because I'm going to be painting one leaf in multiple tones of green so I will need enough space for the colors to mingle and I want the painting to almost fill the whole page. Sometimes I also like to make the edges of the leaves a bit wavy for added variation in shape. And after this, I'm also going to add smaller branches along the left side just to fill in the composition. And they don't have to be attached to the main branch if it doesn't suit your composition. Lastly, I'm going to add the oval shapes for the kumquats in between the leaves, but I like to vary the placement by erasing parts of the leaves as well if the fruits are overlapping in front of the leaves. I also don't want to place them too close to the main stem, and if that's the case, I'll add a tiny stem to attach to the fruits and then to the main stem. These added details will just make the composition look more delicate. Same goes with the leaves as well, because if they're too close to the stem, the lack of negative space will make the composition look kind of bulky. But I like to play around with both, so if the kumquats are in front of the stem, then of course I wouldn't add those tiny stems on top of the kumquats. And hopefully you can see what I mean from the sketch here where I varied the placement and play around with how the elements are overlapping with each other. For those of you who doesn't want to sketch out your own composition, like usual I'll also have the outline available in my coffee shop. I'm going to finish the outline for now but I can always add on more of the detail once I start painting them. Next, I'll go over the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Windsor Red by Windsor & Newton, Quinn Sienna by Daniel Smith, Viridian by Holbein, and Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke. For highlights, I'll also be using Bleedproof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Okay, so let's get to painting. Firstly, I'm going to create an orange by mixing Hansa Yellow with Windsor Red. I'm using more Hansa Yellow in the mix to make a really light orangey color or even sort of like a deep yellow for the base of the kumquat. And then while the surface is still wet, I added more Windsor Red in the mix to create more of an orangey color and add it on to the sides where I feel the shadows are going to be. But it doesn't really matter too much at this point because we're just letting the colors mingle by itself and the slight change in tones are going to be very subtle. This is just going to be the base color of the kumquats and I'm going to apply the same thing for the rest of the fruit. The first kumquat that I painted should be completely dry by now, so I'm going to paint the one behind it. For this one, I used more of an orangey mix. This is just to keep it separate from the one in front, so I'm making this one a little bit darker. And where the kumquats touch, I actually add even more red. And a little bit of Quinn Sienna to make the red more muted instead of it being completely red. I am also going to add a little bit of Quinn Sienna for the red of the kumquats if I feel the need to mute down the color slightly. 
when I was painting these last couple of kumquats, I didn't realize that they were touching. Like the first one where I waited for one of them to completely dry first by painting other ones. But when this happened, you can either use a hair dryer to make sure that the base is completely dry for the first fruit that's touching, then paint the next one once the first fruit is completely dry, or you can also avoid the paint from traveling across each other by leaving a tiny negative space or line in between the shapes to stop the water from traveling into the separate shapes. My apologies here, I was chatting with my friend on the phone and I forgot to press record but there are plenty of leaves here and I'm going to treat them the same way. So for the main green, I use a mix of Viridian and Hansi Yellow. If I want the green to be more yellow or lighter, I would add more of the Hansi Yellow in the mix. And sometimes I also like to add in Quinn Sienna if I want a slightly brown green for a variation for some of the leaves. If I want a dark green, like what I'm doing here, I would add paints grey bluish into the green mix and you can play around with the ratio as well in order to create different tones. I'm letting the paint flow into each other but not blending them completely so the leaves have different tones of green. For some of the greens, you may have already realized sometimes I like to leave out tiny thin white negative space for the midrib but it's not always necessary, I just like to add it on for the larger leaves to break up the shape slightly. For now, I also want to leave out the leaf folds in order to keep the front and the back side of the leaf separate. So I'm treating this similarly to how I painted the kumquats where I move on to other things to paint while I wait for certain sections to dry because I want the folds to have a slightly different green and I want to keep the edges of each shape nice and crisp. For the other side of the leaf or the folds that I left out, I like to separate the color by using a dark green from a mix of paints grey bluish with viridian and a slightly thicker consistency in comparison to the leaves that I've already painted which has lighter green tones. And if I want to mute down the dark green, I like to also add quinciana into the mix sometimes. Basically the only color that I'm avoiding here is Hansi Yellow so the value stays nice and dark whereas Hansi Yellow is one of the main mix for the front face of the leaves. I'm just going to paint the rest of the leaves using the same method and you can really play around with the different tones here as you like. I just find that this is a good chance to play around with color mixing since we're using such a limited palette. 
For some of the smaller folds here, if it gets a bit tough to paint with a larger brush, you can also switch to a very fine brush. I'm going to switch to my size 0 brush so I can reach those really tiny edges. Now that I've painted all the leaves, I'm going to move on to layer on the darker colors and texture of the kumquats. I'm going to use the same orange mix as before with Hansa yellow, red, and a bit of quinciana to mute the color. Firstly, I use a slightly lighter orange color to further deepen the color and create the form. Then with even more red and quinciana in the mix, I create an even darker orange and start tapping lightly with with the tip of my brush to create a dotted pattern. When I'm using a much darker tone in comparison to the base color, I'd follow this up by pulling the color using a clean damp brush to lighten and soften the blend while still dotting on the textures and this will create a smoother transition. For the kumquat here, just like before, I want it to be darker in comparison to the one in front, which is why I use more red and quinciana in the mix, but I'm going to treat it the same way by using a clean damp brush to soften the texture. I'm just going to continue with the rest of the kumquats here. If I feel like I need an even darker orange near the edge, I would just layer it on to add more depth to the kumquats. Just keep in mind whenever you're building up on the darker values to always follow the curvature and imagine the cross contour lines and this will help give the round oval form to each of the fruits. For this one in particular, I find that the base color was a bit too light for my liking so I'm just glazing on more color to build up the vibrancy before I add in the texture. While I wait for the glaze to dry, I had a look at the whole composition again and I felt like some parts look a bit empty after I painted in all the leaves. So I just add on more leaves freehand where the spaces look a bit empty to fill the composition. And for some of the leaves that I've already painted, I also just add a darker layer on the side to add some folds even though I didn't originally draw it. I just find that this gives a bit more interest to the painting and I find that it just looks better this way because there's more contrast in value. Now I'm going back to the previous kumquat now that it's completely dry and I'm going to add texture using the same deep orange, applying it in the same way as I did with the rest of the kumquats. You can see that on some of them, I've left out a ring of the lighter base color around the outside of the kumquats and this is the case if there's a bit of backlight going on or multiple light source. So I like to personally vary the shadow areas but the main source of light that I'm painting here is still from the top which is why most of the kumquats have darker shadows at the bottom. Here I'm painting on the branches using a mix of quinciana and paints grey bluish in a thick consistency and of course I use my tiny brush for this in order to get really fine delicate lines. I try to make sure that the bottom of the leaves are connected to the branches whenever they're visible and also the kumquats. And if the top of the kumquats are showing, I like to add on a tiny dot before I add the stem or the branch on. So the way it's attached to the branch look more sturdy as it should. As I get towards the bottom of the branch, I made the lines a bit thicker so it looks more realistic for the tiny branch to hold up the weight of the leaves and the fruits. I also like to add additional tiny branches where I add small leaves because the leaves that I've drawn out so far are quite large so I just like to vary the size further. 
Going back to the leaves now, I personally like to add on some shadows on some of the leaves which are placed under another leaf or under a fruit. I like to also darken some folds of the leaves to increase the contrast in value. While doing this and waiting for parts to dry off, I like to add on the details of the leaves like the midrib and the veins using a thinner consistency of a similar type of green which I use for the base color of a certain leaf. So if the leaf that I'm painting on looks more yellow, I would create a similar color as that and then paint on the details and so on. I also want to make sure that the load on my brush is very light while doing this to keep the lines and details of the leaves nice and thin. It's important to use a lighter consistency instead of a darker consistency because we don't want the lines to look too defined or else it might end up looking kind of cartoony and someone also asked me before how I control the load of my brush. I don't always show it on the frame because I don't have enough space sometimes but I always have tissue right next to me to take the excess paint off my brush whenever I need a lighter load. Here I'm going to go over some of the branches as well, especially the main one to make it a bit thicker so it looks more sturdy. I'm going to erase the pencil marks which are still showing and from time to time, once everything is completely dry, I like to look at the painting as a whole and layer on more colors whenever I feel like I can build the form further and make the painting look more cohesive. Lastly, I'm going to use Bleed Proof White with Hansi Yellow and a bit of that orange tone. And I'm going to use a light consistency in order to make the color look more transparent. And I'm going to dot on the texture like how I painted on the textures before with the darker oranges. But this time I'm going to paint on the highlights. If the values are too different, you can add more water to make it more transparent and I like to also add more water around the edges just like before to soften the transition. Or you can also use zinc white gouache instead because zinc white is more transparent whereas this bleed proof white is actually very opaque. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this painting. It's quite simple. Like usual, all the list of tools that I use for this painting as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. Happy painting and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!